So the other thing you're going to need, like all these processes, also you need a start and stop signals like transcription. That is, all of these processes have a start signal and an end signal, so the thing knows where to do its job. Okay? And that was the analogy thing that we talked about at, for the clicker question. So what I want to do now is take you step by step through the process, and then we'll talk about details. So the process looks something like this. Number one, the ribosome starts at uh, the start codon. We'll talk about which, what that is in a second. Start closest to the five prime end of the mRNA. So the mRNA is red, five prime to three prime. The ribosome grabs on the end and rolls along, grabs on the five prime end and rolls along until it sees the first start code. And we'll talk about that this in just a sec. And then the tRNA with the proper amino acid base pairs with the mRNA, the messenger RNA, and then number three, the amino acid is added to the protein as it, the chain grows, and the mRNA is red, five prime to three prime. The protein is made amino tricarboxyl. So that's the, that's why we I made a fuss about the amino tricarboxyl direction because we usually write protein sequences amino terminus to carboxyl terminus because that's the direction they're actually made, the way they're synthesized and how they'll line up with the RNA. So we keep our sequences aligned. And then the, um, the ribosome advances three nucleotides and this process repeats. And you basically repeat that until you run into at the stop codon mRNA and the protein are released. And as a note, the protein folds as it is made. Okay. So I'll show you an animation in a second, but what I picture is, I don't know if you guys ever played with Play-Doh when you were a little kid, those sort of fuzzy pumper things, you know, you push the lever and the Play-Doh comes squeegeeing out. Well, that's kind of what happens. The ribosome squeezes the protein out. And as it comes out, it folds up in all those ways we talked about, hydrogen bonds, ionic bonds, hydrophobic interactions, et cetera. All right. What I want to direct your attention to is there in, in today's information packed handout, there's a bunch of still frames from some of those animations. And I'm going to show you an animation just for a second to rem remind you where you are, where we are in the process. And then I want to show you uh, an animation of translation uh, to sort of make this process a little bit clearer. So give people a chance to write that stuff down and find the handouts, and then I'll um, play, the, play the movies. Okay. So this one. So this is our general central dogma thing. We start with DNA, because that's what genes are made of. Right? The first step was what we talked about on Wednesday. You peel the strands apart, and you're going to copy one of them into mRNA. You're going to transcribe one. And this shows a strand going away. It doesn't really go away. It's sort of ignored for the moment. Right? Because remember, transcription is not trying to copy everything just this one gene of interest. So it copies this one gene into mRNA, transcription. We talked, like I said, talk about Wednesday. How does it work? Base pairing, right? Base comes in, base pairs and joins, base pairs and joins. How, how do, why, does it, how, why does it not make the wrong sequence? Because the wrong base won't base pair. Um, and then the RNA gets peeled off. And what this doesn't show is the DNA is then going to reform. The, the DNA helix will zip back up. The RNA comes out of the 
RNA polymerase. And then the ribosome chunks along, reading them in groups of three, that's what we're talking about now, and makes the protein. And those are the amino acids, one amino acid for every three nucleotides in the RNA. So that's the sort of big picture of where we're at. Now, if we want to zoom in on translation, this animation is a bit more complicated than we need it, but it contains various important pieces. So this big thing is going to be the ribosome. It turns out the ribosome assembles out of many big pieces on the RNA. So first of all, some pieces come in which you will not worry about, initiation factors, they call them, to start the translation pro process. All right, so here you got the RNA. All right, so the backbone and the various bases sticking out, single-stranded. This doesn't show the start code on very well, but it shows how the process basically works. So what happens is this bad boy up here is the tRNA. Why is it all coiled up like that? It's like a protein, right? It folds up. It's a single strand of RNA, but what makes it fold up is not hydrophobic interactions like we're used to. It's actually base pairing. It doesn't show it here, but these loops are held together because there are, this is an RNA and has nucleotides sticking out, and they actually base pair with themselves, and it gives it a simple structure based entirely on base pairing. And here, this is what's called the anticodon. It's going to pair with the uh, um, RNA ba by regular base pairing. And that's the amino acid. And there are enzymes in the cell that ensure that the right amino acid gets stuck on the right tRNA. So this is going to come in. And how does the right one come in? Basically, the one that base pairs is the only one that can stay. So it comes in and sticks by base pairing. The ribosome assembles. And then one by one, new tRNAs come in. And this makes it sort of look choreographed, like only the right one comes in, right? But in fact, lots of the wrong ones come in and they get bounced out because they don't base pair. Only the one that can base pair properly will stay. And then there's sort of a very subtle detail. I wish this animation was a little bit lighter. But the thing to watch now, here's the amino acid from the first tRNA. Here's the amino acid on the second tRNA. There's going to be a switcheroo as we assemble the protein. They transfer over. Shoop. And now you've got a protein with two amino acids, and a new tRNA has come in. And you go along, it shoops along, the third amino acid gets added. So that was the first one in the chain, second one, third one, fourth one, so amino terminus, et cetera, et cetera. You add more and more RNAs. And at each step along the way, let me back it up one second, at each step along the way, the empty tRNAs come out. So ones that are called charged, ones with amino acids come in, once they've dropped their amino acid off, they're spit out by the ribosome, and they get recycled. So the enzyme, the proper enzyme comes along and sticks a new amino acid on that so it can go around again. And so then this thing goes sort of chugging along, three nucleotides at a, at a, a step, adding amino acids to the protein one by one. Base pair and join, base pair and join, except it's three at a time now instead of one. And then it rolls along doing its thing. And then what they do is they zoom out, and what's interesting is you can actually have several ribosomes reading the same RNA, kind of one after the other. The one at the front will have the longer protein, because it's been on longer, and then the ones, for, the ones behind it will be less far, less far advanced. Let me back that up and let it um, play one more time. Questions about how, what, what's going on here? Yeah. Why does the protein... To, uh, why does the, why does the, so why does one amino acid get joined onto the other? So there's two ways to look at why that happens. First of all, if you didn't do that, you wouldn't make a protein, right? But, the, uh, but then, and there's, what the ribosome does is do some little bit of chemistry to make that, to join those amino acids together so that they become a protein chain. So because, remember, the protein chain is a bunch of covalently bonded amino acids. You actually got to nail them together with a covalent bond. And so what ha that's where the where the peptide bond gets formed is like right at that instance, that little sort of, right, if you look in, right up in there is where that peptide bond is going to form. And so, oink, you know, that wasn't there, and now, ping, now they're bonded together, right? And so now you've got a two, two amino acid chain, then you'll have a three and a four. Other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Where do the tRNAs get the amino acid from? That's a cool question. There are enzymes which recognize the tRNA, and they can read the, ant the anticodon and know, oh, this is the right one, and then they stick the appropriate amino acid on. So for each tRNA, there's actually an enzyme whose job it is to stick the right amino acid on. Um, other, yeah. Does the ribosome pause on each codon? 
Yes. Um, that's right. As far as I know, it kind of sits there, does its thing, and then goes kerchunk three at a time. Ka-chunk. That's right. It will not move unless it gets the proper amino acid. That's absolutely right. So, for example, if you don't have enough of the... Suppose you have to put a tryptophan in there, and you don't have enough tryptophan, the ribosome will stop and wait for a tryptophan tRNA to come in. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the, the beginning, they show there's two colored balls going at the beginning. There are protein factors that get the whole thing started. We won't sweat about them, but that, that's, the ribosome is actually a very complicated thing. Other questions? Yeah, Raquel. So what happens to the tRNA after it loses the amino acid? It gets recycled. It gets recharged. The enzymes grab it and stick it, the proper amino acid back on again so you can get reused. 